Shivo, today I'll share with you the details, the nitty gritties, the tenets of the karma and spirituality. What is karma and how it is connected with spirituality, the path of spirituality. Karma, what is normally being conveyed as a deed, but deed in respect to whom? This isn't a correlation between two similar species, like what you did and how it resulted for another human or your act towards some other living species like the animal kingdom. Let's take up a very famous example of trophy hunting. People pay and kill animals for fun, called wrongly termed as trophy hunting. There's no trophy in that. This kind of a karma, the deed in relation with the nature, that is what the real definition of karma is. The deed in relation with the nature. That is going to affect you in your journey towards spirituality. Because when you have to survive in a world where the survival of the fittest is only possible, howsoever stringent the laws may be, of course, those laws are protecting the physical existence of other person. But those laws hardly can circumvent or protect the person from the torture, the lambasting, which the other person can do professionally. Like even in the class, one student is the topper, which means that student basically took a greater leap than the second. Yes, there is a race. There is a race. But is that topper responsible for the remorse and the pain which the student who is second in the class would have gone through? Is it a reflection of the bad karma of the student who came first? No, it is not. This is wrongly defined as, as karma. No, it is just one behaved better in the battle than the other. This is the surviving skills. Like in profession, you are working in an office, you perform better than the other, you get the promotion out of turn, and the other, who is your colleague right now, becomes a junior. Is this a bad karma? No. This is how the survival is. Like a lioness killing a foal to feed its own cubs. That is how the survival in the jungle is. That is how the mother nature has designed everything. But it is only with the humans that we need or we are in the habit of stacking things. Why? Because there is a negative psychology towards it. We wait, we are saving for a rainy day. Which means somewhere within us, we are thinking bad for our own selves that there would be a rainy day. Right? Pause and think again. Isn't this thought a kind of a wish, a negative wish, a curse, which we are giving upon our own selves that there would be a rainy day? We are expecting, we are basically cursing our own selves that there would be a rainy day. And how this affects our spirituality? No, it doesn't. But the time we interfere in the life of the other species just for our fun or for our taste, not for our survival, but for our taste, that's bad karma. Killing an elephant for a tusk, killing a lion or any other species for trophy hunting, clearing up the forest, squeezing the natural habitat of the species of the animal kingdom, that is bad karma. Because howsoever justifiable, you may try to present it, but it always remains within you that there is something which was done deliberately and this deliberate action caused or inflicted a pain to someone else who was innocent. Killing an animal for food, that, that animal is not for your food. The structure of a denture is not designed as a carnivore. There are plants to feed, yes, definitely. There is, there is no second thought to it that even plants have lives. That's why a seed develops into a plant. Because it's, it's also a living species. But even plants, you can't cut them for fun. And if you cut them for fun, that's also a bad karma. Like people have a, have a habit of plucking the flowers and throwing with the petals on someone else. That is also a bad karma. Taking up a garland and presenting it to any statue or a person, that's also a bad karma. So anything which 
is not designed to be way that you are making it do that is bad karma guiding someone and being cynical are two different things guiding someone good being cynical is a reflection of your ego and ego is definitely a not a thing which you would like to carry in your path for spirituality because it won't be of any benefit for you this is an obstacle kaam krodh moh lobh ahankar as it is said in the vedas the five demons one should get rid of it and karma is a thing which defines or which is basically controlling all five of these what you do will define kaam is the desire you enact anything because of that desire the way you enact defines your growth and why you did it defines your lobe having it defines your maya and post having it defines your ego so karma is defining all these five demons so keep your karma at check there are many hormones within your system there are many neurotransmitters within your brain your hormones your neurotransmitters get affected you may realize or you may not realize but they are affecting you from within so the time you act or you do anything just try and ponder before enacting whether your action is detrimental to mother nature in some way because if it is it definitely qualifies for bad karma because a lion doesn't kill for fun so the way you act the way you do the way you think because half thought is half done when you think bad about someone it is almost half done that is why in vedic system silence is always preferred to words that is why a pupil is always suggested and instructed by its guru to recite rosary so that the mind is not empty it is engaged in some physical activity there is some mantra which is being recited within so that there is no emptiness in the mind as they say empty mind is a devil's paradise so don't let your mind be a paradise to the devil do good karmas and you will see it will aid you it will assist you in your journey towards spirituality till the time we meet